When did you come on board this project? What attracted you about it? Um, Judd brought this to my attention about four years ago, right after he had done Knocked Up, because um, he had Kristen, you know, Kristen was so funny in that film, and he had told her, basically, you should write your own vehicle so that you could, you know, have your own film that you're starring in. And they wrote a draft, and then he had me come to the first table read of it to just, to, you know, see what I thought. And I really liked it. Uh, I, th I thought it was just a great vehicle for Kristen, a very relatable story, a very warm story at, at its core. And then, and then it just sort of kind of we got busy with other things and it sort of went away for a while. And it was only the beginning of last year when my agents called up and said, it's alive again and Judd wants to talk to you. And then I got on the phone and it was a done deal and I just jumped on board. Following up on something you just said, it's a hilariously funny movie, but it's, it also has an emotional core to it. Yeah. That's the most important thing to, to Judd and I and to Kristen. The, the, uh, comedy can only be good if there is if there's characters you believe in and character, characters you invest in. And the only way to have that is to have a very real story they're going through that, that's very relatable. So as long as you build that base and make sure that it works dramatically and that there's stakes that you're rooting for and something that you're wanting them to get, then the comedy comes on top of that. Then you can throw obstacles in their way that are the, the, that's where the comedy comes from. Things they have to go through, things that are going wrong, things they're having to contend with. And then you just can play that up as big as you want, but it always has to be coming out of an honest place. If, if it's just people trying to be funny for funny's sake, then, it, then you don't invest because you just go, okay, this is just somebody being silly now, and I can't, I don't, I don't relate to that. So how do you see Annie then, and what do you think Kristen brought to that role? Well, there's, I love Annie. The character of Annie is so lovable because she's, it could happen to any of us. You know, the important thing is that Annie's not a loser. Annie is somebody who was doing well and then lost her way. She had a bakery, she started, she had a boyfriend, she was really in, in the mix, doing it well, and then the economy tanked the bakery and the boyfriend left and she had to get a crappy job to make money. So, you know, like any of us, she can take a fall from grace. And so you're just wanting, you're so rooting for her to get back to, but to what she, you know, to who she was. But she's a little damaged from that. And so Kristen brings such an, a vulnerability to that role that you just can't help but root for her and you can't help but love her. And it's the difference between having a character where you're kind of like, eh, I, I'm, I'm fed up with you because you keep screwing up and I don't care about your story. And it's a testament to what a strong performer she is, because if you don't invest, you don't have a movie. And But to be able to invest in a person like that means that they are a big movie star, because they have something about them that draws you to them. But it's an ensemble cast. How do you mm -hmm. find the other five key also female roles? Well, we had a lot of auditions, but some are, are people that, uh, that Kristen and Annie had worked with before. A lot of them are from the Groundlings uh, Comedy Troupe, which is an L.A.-based comedy school and, and, and theater. And so many of them have worked together before, but then there was others uh, who we met through auditions. I mean, I'd worked with Ellen. They didn't know Ellie Kemper, who plays Becca, but I'd worked with her on The Office when I was uh, producing and directing that show. And then, um, you know, then Rose Byrne came to us because Judd had worked with her on Get Him to the Greek, and she was so funny in that. Uh, you know, and then we just auditioned a lot of a lot of other people. But uh, it, it, the, the cream rises to the top very quickly, and you, you know even though there's all these funny women out there, you see there's a chemistry between these ones. And we would bring people in and mix and match, and we had very funny people we didn't use who were great that just, for some reason, this group seemed to click uh, together. And it was such an ensemble piece that we needed that. How is it um, directing six women on set? When it's these women, it's fantastic. I mean, they're really fun. That's what I love about women who do comedy is there's not a lot of vanity involved. It's very much about the craft of getting the comedy right and keeping it honest and keeping it real. And so you're not always, you know, contending with like, my light's here and that, you know, or my hair, get my hair perfect. It, it's all in service of, of the characters. And so that makes it a very easy set. And on top of it, since they were, they were either friends or they were so friendly with each other that they just really got along great. I mean, there was not, you never say when there, if there was problems on the set, but I, I'm here to say there were no problems on the set because it was just, they just got along great. They were so dependent on each other because they're all improvers that you, you, you can't do improv in a bubble. You can't be a diva and then expect to have good improv with somebody because it's all about connecting with that person and listening to that person. It would be very unfair to call this a chick flick because I think it's a movie that men are going to enjoy just as much as women. Yeah, we've been finding very nicely that, that men really like it. Look, they're always, men are always going to hear the name Bridesmaids and they're going to see wedding dresses and go, oh, it's about, you know, it's just about 
problems that women have that I can't relate to. But, uh, you know, I, I'm hoping this is kind of, I remember Devil Wears Prada, which I love that movie too, which seemed like it was going to be kind of a girl movie. And then you get in there and you go, no, this is a movie about a real, real characters going through work situations and the pressures of that. So I, my hope is that guys will allow their wives to drag them, their wives and girlfriends to drag them to the theater and then they'll see it's good and tell their friends and we'll break down the barriers between men and women. One world of comedy. <laughs> two, by the way, great supporting male characters. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Played by two great actors. What can you tell us about the characters and the actors who played? Yes, well, we have, we have the, the, the two sides of mankind. We have John Hamm, who represents sort of the, 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 the dog of the bunch. He's, he's a, a good guy, but uh, definitely uh, playing the field and using our, our beloved Kristen a little bit. And then we have Chris O'Dowd, who plays uh, a cop that she meets, who is, who is a good guy, a guy who, who needs, needs a good person in his life and, it, and, is, and is the person that Annie could use in her life, who you know, kind of complements what she has going on and her personality. And so both such strong men, both so funny in such different ways, both great improvers and just great with comedy. And it was a joy to have them both on the set. They're both heroes of mine. You've known each other for some, for some years mm -hmm. now. Um, how was it? How was he on to work with on this movie? Oh, fantastic, fantastic! I mean, we've yeah, I've known him since you know we were stand-ups together. I think I've known him since he was seventeen years old, and uh, we just always have bonded over having the same sense of humor and the same philosophy on how stories should be told and how you know they should be real and, and the the emotional honesty of them. And you know, when I did Freaks and Geeks and brought it to him, he really tapped into it. And together, I think we complement each other very nicely and kind of you know. I, we bring out the best in each other, and uh, we hadn't worked together for about 10 years, although we were always trying to figure out something to do together, but we're both busy on our, on our own path. And so when this came up, it just seemed like the right thing, and uh, he was just a joy to work. I mean, he's, he's, he's one of the most talented producers I know and, and writers. He can just figure out, he just look at a script and say, you need this, you're missing this, and then we go and you know, work with the writers and work with ourselves and kind of bring it out, and it all comes together. And uh, it, I, it's the greatest co collaboration of my life to work with Judd. Speaking of bringing the best out, um, what can you tell us about how much improvising went on during the shoot? Uh, a good good amount of improvising went on. We uh, What we do is we start with a strong script that Kristen and Annie wrote, uh, and then when we hire the cast, then we bring them in and start doing rehearsals, and in the in rehearsals, They'll be doing improv. We'll be filming it and, and writing writing down the funny lines, and we'll go back to the script and put in the new stuff they had and kind of rework the scenes to bring their personalities. They're, they're defining the characters to us. The characters were written, but then they are going to help us rewrite the characters by bringing their own input and their own personality to it. And then, then when we get to the set, we have a lot of material from these rehearsals that we're going to try alternate jokes and then on top of it then we just let them improv and you know and, and bring a freshness to it there so we we generate a lot of material but out of that improv and, and all that all that it, you get a very fresh energy it, it sounds like you're you're actually hearing a conversation is, is being said for the first time and you're discovering jokes the way when one of your friends makes a joke and you don't expect it you're getting to laugh at it because you're actually watching something that happened in real time I'm wondering if you see possible sequels. Who knows? I, I hope we do well enough to even uh, let that be a, a question. But what would be better than working with this group of women again and letting them be funny and letting them be heartfelt and real again?